Okay, let's go ahead and call this committee meeting to order. And if we could begin by going around the table uh, for the tape, I'd appreciate it. Nick, please. Jake Training. L.B. Gray Jackson. Paul Holman, Assembly. W.O.C. Andrew. Ernie Hall. Patrick Foote. Jerry Weaver. Carol Wall. Eric McConnell. Tom Davis. Thank you. Um, the way we're basically going to work this is Tom is going to give an overview of what's been done in the past, what the planning staff is working on now. Then I'm going to chime in with how the committee's been operating and what the plans are for moving forward. And if, feel free if you, Tom, is it okay if they interrupt with questions or do you want to? That's fine. It'll go faster if you can hold questions. But. Okay, well, if you can hold questions for Tom and with me, interrupt any time. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, Jennifer Johnson has joined us. Can somebody hit the lights? Hey, Harriet, would you? Thank you. And Harriet Drummond has joined us. And Chris Birch has joined us. That's too dark. Harriet. I, is, I think, is that okay? That one. Better. That's better. better. Thank you. Go ahead, Tom. Okay, so what we're going to do is give you a brief overview of the, the main objectives and key changes of the Title 21 rewrite current code. Hit really quickly the potential economic impacts of the new Title 21, and then focus on the process, how we got here today. Uh, three parts of the process, the history, we've got what's occurred since provisional adoption, and then thirdly, our strategy, our process going forward between uh, the time of adoption and then implementation. Title 21 implements the comprehensive plan as a home rule municipality. Anchorage it has both the powers and the responsibilities to provide a comprehensive plan for future growth. And as stated in the, in, in the state laws, one of the key legal implementations of our comprehensive plan is the Title 21 language regulations, uh, regulating the, uh, the, the, the breaking up of the area into different zoning districts and you know, regulating use uh, for compatibility, building both and other, uh, other regulations. Title 21 uh, has been uh, here since the late 40s, but its last major update was written for a time when we were a much smaller community than today, growing outward into you know, kind of a greenfield development pattern. So our current code was written 40 years ago for a time when Anchorage Development was spreading out, it was basically greenfield style, low density neighborhoods in one area, business in the other. But by the end of the century, in recognition that the bowl had primarily filled up with the uh, developed and encumbered lands in purple, the city adopted a new city comprehensive plan, which recognized that in order to continue to grow, Anchorage would need to begin to grow in a different way. And that would be primarily through focusing some of the higher intensity growth, second generation growth for Anchorage's second century in key urban employment centers, and then our existing neighborhood commercial centers around the board. By focusing more of our higher intensity growth in those areas, we create some efficiencies in land use in the bowl, enabling us to protect the uh, low density and natural resource character of some of our outlying neighborhoods. So this is a major shift in the way Anchorage sees itself growing going forward because we are out of those easily available large tracts of vacant land. Well, the current code isn't very well equipped to deal with a new way of growing. So Anchorage is about almost a century old, right? In 2015, we have our 100th birthday. The current code isn't very good at encouraging efficient use of our remaining land base. And it certainly isn't good at creating uh, growth through innovative infill, redevelopment, mixed-use projects in that small remaining vacant lot within Midtown, or taking away an existing strip mall, wiping the site clean, and creating something that's more intense or adding new housing into an existing neighborhood. The current code makes that kind of hard. The current code also does not do a very good job at dealing with the potential impacts of that kind of growth. Because more growth is occurring in existing neighborhoods, and it is occurring at higher densities, maybe a couple extra stories, it's having more intensive impacts on its neighbors because we're growing in a, in a, closer, uh, a, a closer urban environment. 
And so we're, what, what the rig right tries to do is to ensure that incoming development contributes to the lasting value of the neighborhoods in which it occurs. At the same time, we're trying to support infill and redevelopment. So we're trying to thread the eye of the needle. Another way we're trying to thread the eye of the needle is to not only clarify the regulations, there are a lot of user complaints about the current code. So we're trying to create predictable, clear, and consistently and fairly applied standards. So you know when you come to the front counter what the rules are and that you know those rules are going to be applied fairly to all parties. On the other hand, the community wanted more flexible regulations because now that we're in infill situation, the remaining lots, the remaining building opportunities are much more difficult and they vary by neighborhood and location because our different communities have become varied and different from one another. So we had to thread the eye of another needle, clarify and make the regulations more flexible. Planning, and through the tools of the rewrite, is designed to make driving easier to get around than it would be otherwise, with uh, less traffic congestion, to make housing easier to provide, make it easier for folks to be able to have housing opportunities, perhaps in, uh, in a more urban environment, at the same time as protecting housing opportunities in the lower density neighborhoods. It's a, it's a place where if you have an industrial business, you have a place to be where you're not necessarily having to do with conflicts with the neighboring residential use that doesn't like the noise you create. The, the way of developing through existing centers allows us to soak up uh, more growth and it allows us to build on uh, existing studies, uh, existing trends in land use, uh, projected growth coming out of our recent uh, residential and commercial land studies to basically build on those existing trends in the existing centers and try to uh, uh, create a more efficient use of land. Drilling down into the centers themselves, one of the key ways of making land more efficient, uh, providing for more growth in the same area, is the way in which the uses in an area, let's say it's an existing commercial district, evolve to where they share a similar set of development standards, where they agree to share uh, similar characteristics to help connect them better to one another, but also be more compatible with each other in a close urban environment. In order to use land efficiently, you want a big party in a small room. And so this uh, conceptual diagram shows different uses in that small room. And one of the key ways that type of uh, pattern makes, uh, makes the use of land more efficient is that it, it uh, reduces parking demand. Uh, there are tools in the provisionally adopted rewrite that uh, aren't aren't recommended to go forward, including some mixed use zoning districts. Uh, this may have uh, make us have to lean uh, lean more heavily on some of the remaining tools uh, going forward in the rewrite to uh, allow this to happen. Uh, the rewrite isn't just about building uh, building up infill and redevelopment. When we allow more opportunities at the higher density and end of the spectrum near the city centers, we're in a way uh, relieving pressure on developing some of our outlying areas in different kinds of uh, uh, more rural suburban lifestyles, but protecting those areas from development pressures that would occur. So the rewrite is supporting that, that great variety of uh, living, housing, and neighborhood <coughs> options that we enjoy and that's unique to the municipality. But when we have more infill growth and redevelopment, we're going to see more redevelopment in the existing neighborhoods, and it's more likely to have impacts on existing neighborhoods. Uh, we are already beginning to see the, the advent of the multi-story redevelopment on, in, in tight urban situations. And so the rewrite comes with some tools that our 40-year-old code just didn't have, didn't need to have back in the 60s. Now, it is coming with uh, more standards to, to provide some better property in between the neighborhoods and, and the, the surrounding uh, development. Not only is infill and redevelopment occurring at the neighborhood boundary, but it's also going to occur within the neighborhoods. 
we want to uh, support infill and redevelopment. Uh, however, uh, in order to allow that to happen with less neighborhood resistance, as well as contribute to the lasting value of neighborhoods, uh, there are some minimum ground rules being uh, established that would encourage, for example, uh, more uh, landscaping, uh, walkway connections to the neighborhood streets, or simply a stronger connection to uh, the neighborhood uh, that the development is occurring in. At the same time, however, uh, we don't want to beat up on this development here. It's just a parking lot with some boxes in it. But in a way, the Title 21 rewrite, excuse me, the current code, uh, almost required this to happen. Uh, it does not allow for uh, area-specific reductions in parking to fit the situation. Uh, so the rewrite is allowing more flexible site planning to occur by uh, perhaps reducing parking requirements, uh, making room for more amenities, uh, allowing room for more housing, and, and uh, making possible some innovative type developments that we've just barely begun to see on the horizon in Anchorage. Uh, for example, uh, converting an, an, a vacant building into a, a, into a, into a reusing a vacant building for a, for a different purpose, uh, taking a strip mall and building on top of it, or taking an infill sites and, and, and providing density in town. The rewrite also looks to protect some of the natural resources around the municipality. It's also looking to provide a more complete street network. Uh, first of all, this is about reducing emergency service response times or reducing the amount of time it takes to get into and out of your neighborhood. Uh, in this case, it would reduce the amount of through traffic being cutting through the neighborhood, competing with the kids playing in the neighborhood street. Uh, another key way of uh, making it possible to, to get around in, in different ways, you have, in addition to different routes, uh, making it possible to get around uh, by walking or bicycling. And that itself leads to efficiencies in terms of uh, uh, lower growth and road congestion and parking demand. Walking to a development doesn't stop at the property line. Once you get off that street network and you get to the property line, you still need to get the people to the building metros. Uh, walkways used to be thought of as kind of the icing on the cake. Uh, but that thing that'd be nice, uh, but we can't really afford. Uh, we've come around to believe that walkways are actually a key economic development tool in the rewrite. Because what we're finding, that, what we're finding is that when you begin to develop uh, urban environments where walking becomes easier, we see a statistical reduction in demand for parking. What that means for us is that if you have a, basically it's a, between a five to 15%, depending on the situation, reduction in long run parking demand. That's significant because for this developer, the parking space cost between eight to ten thousand dollars to construct and that's not the structure part. The parking space takes between 250 square feet to 300 square feet per space including uh, pertinent driveways that can be uh, even more space. That is land that is not available for income generating floor space <coughs> for amenities. It is land that's being taken away from potential housing potential commerce, potential, that efficient use of land growth that we'd like to see in our commercial centers. So the walkways are a key part of helping our city uh, use its existing sites more efficiently as they begin to relate to one another. Uh, you want to walk to that building entrance, you don't want to walk to a blank wall. Uh, you want to uh, have your buildings facing the street to become a part of that strong network of, of buildings that uh, address the public realm. Uh, and, and in the case of these folks here, uh, purposefully oriented their building to be very community oriented so that you could actually on this uh, Northern Lights location, uh, while they're changing your tire, usually walk out and, and go next door to the Panda restaurant, have a cup of coffee. When these types of uses begin to occur repeatedly, the magic of the city begins to happen and that's where you begin to see your 5 to 10 to 15% reduction in parking. And that's where we 
get the situation where for the 85% or 90% of us who are continuing to drive, or the 80 to 90% of our car trips that we're continuing to drive to, the parking is still easy. Uh, it's just that you have reduced uh, amount of congestion getting there and the same amount of uh, parking access while allowing for other options and creating more livable town. The last objective I'd like to touch on before we get on to uh, some of the impacts and uh, the process of the rewrite are that last eye of the needle that we needed to threat with the Title 21 rewrite. And that was to provide more predictable, consistent, and clear regulations for those who come into the front door, while at the same time providing for flexibility. So you're looking at a totally reorganized and modernized code. For example, current code, we have 350 land uses spread through the code. They're defined, some are not defined, they're used inconsistently. These 350 land use types of allowed uses in all the districts is streamlined in the Title 21 rewrite to 140 uses defined clearly, consistently used to the rewrite. There's all kinds of friction going on currently in our reviews for applicants that will disappear. Another thing that's happening is that more approvals will be uh, efficient. They'll be at the administrative level. And that, instead of immediately bumping you up to uh, a board, uh, there, are, uh, there are other ways to get approval. But the fellow approaching that front counter also wants to be able to propose a creative alternative solution that may not meet the letter of the law. The current code is like walking into the general store. You want some cereal, just go to the oatmeal bag. But the rewrite is going to give options for people approaching the front counter because in an infill situation, we have to have uh, more flexibility in the code because the, the, the remaining lands, uh, the development situations are more difficult. Uh, because the neighborhoods have grown up to become unique, different from one another. Uh, and so uh, one of the ways of keeping clarity uh, while also providing for flexibility are uh, menu choices, uh, rewards and incentives. Um, when those don't work out, uh, there are administrative ways to propose a completely different design solution. I'm going to meet the intent of your code, but I'm proposing a more creative solution with my design team. Uh, very quickly on the economic impacts. One of the key uh, findings of the updated economic impact uh, testing is that uh, it seems as though we are able to thread the identity that while encouraging development and providing, uh, uh, raising the bar on minimum development standards, we're controlling costs and in some cases reducing costs. Uh, particularly for our more intense land uses, uh, office employment, multi-story, uh, and especially multi-story residential, the kind that's very difficult to make pencil today and the kind of need in our centers. Uh, the land area requirements uh, per floor area, their commercial space, uh, per dwelling, uh, they're falling. Uh, in the 13 sites we tested, we had an average 7% reduction. Now, not every site is the same. Uh, the impacts vary by the situation. Uh, but uh, for example, in this test case, you're, what you're seeing there is a 10% reduction in uh, costs uh, directly related to complying with Title 21 from the current code to the Title 21 rewrite uh, in this project. Okay. So, I am going to interject that there are people who really disagree with this impact analysis and think it's inadequate and incomplete and I've asked for another a C to be prepared. That's more accurate. Thank you, Tom. One of the criticisms of the uh, economic impact analysis is that it didn't, uh, it didn't uh, address soft costs. So when we prepare minimum standards for raising minimum standards, the bar for development, one of the things that uh, the, the development team is going to have to pay closer attention to how they design their site. So there are soft costs that are involved in that. Uh, difficult to measure in, in this uh, analysis where we uh, focused on the direct uh, hard costs, uh, which were easier to collect uh, with the help of the local development committee. Another, uh, another potential soft cost is the cost of administering the new code. Uh, with the training and testing uh, with, uh, within the, de the department, what we believe is that we've achieved our objective, which is the rewrite is designed to be implemented with our current staff resources. 
uh, what um, a review of, of the rewrite, the provisionally adopted rewrite indicated is that uh, we will continue to be able to review and approve developments within the required time frame for land use reviews. Which, by the way, is far below uh, the time frame that that same applicant is having to go through to get their structural review, which is a six week period. So we're staying within a much uh, shorter review period for the land use regulations than for the other things that the applicant's confronted with, the building code or the fire code. Uh, but we didn't just get uh, criticism from uh, the side that's looking very carefully at cost development for the particular specific site. Uh, there's also a very difficult to, to measure benefit of, of minimum ground rules, uh, of having to have your, your telephone uh, ring less often because there are fewer uh, conflicts between uh, neighboring property owners in, in a district. Um, by uh, allowing for things or encouraging things to happen which uh, contribute to the uh, lasting value of the neighborhoods. So these are uh, these were not within the uh, 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 framework of the uh, uh, economic impact analysis. Uh, briefly about the process history, uh, Title 21 um, <coughs> has gone through more than five public review draft iterations of, of the Title 21 over the years. Uh, each iteration with extensive public comment, uh, different points at which uh, extensive testing has occurred, um, and then uh, through the end, we believe of around 350 public meetings. Um, I don't know if the Assembly Title 21 Committee is aware of it, but uh, by our estimation by now, the committee itself, for example, has met uh, approximately 135 times. It That's feels like it. <laughs> we are new. I like so uh, two to three hour meetings, <laughs> each one, uh, not including the prep time. Uh, but it also included a, a approximately $700,000 in professional planning consulting and help. Uh, we think by now we're up to about 40,000 hours of professional planning uh, staff time on this project. Uh, also extensive work uh, by the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, for a three year period up to provisional adoption and then again in 2012. Uh, all of this leading up to uh, the Assembly Committee uh, is uh, completing its work on a set of revised <coughs> chapters. Uh, provisionally adopted code in 2010 by the Assembly. Uh, this just documents for you uh, the essentials of the process so that when you receive uh, the document, uh, it's going to be a revised Title 21 uh, showing the changes. Uh, this is simply uh, a diagram in general of what's occurred to get from that provisionally adopted Title 21 to the, uh, the document that uh, is recommended by the Assembly Title 21 Committee. That document's going to look like this. It's going to have a couple of, uh, of things to help you see what the changes are. First of all, it's going to show you uh, where all the changes are from the provisionally adopted. So anything it highlights indicates uh, something is recommended to change from that chapter. Uh, it's going to indicate, uh, by color coding those highlights, who recommended the change. Uh, since provisional adoption, we've had some tech amendments. Uh, the administration had its review with its consultant. The administration then recommended uh, amendments uh, dealing with about 20 different issues. Uh, that's in red. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended amendments uh, appearing in blue. And then the Assembly Title 21 Committee's um, uh, own changes and recommendations. Uh, the more substantive changes, we intend to provide annotation and summary explanations so uh, you can see what, what that is or why it's there on each chapter. Uh, this is the chapters where they stand in the process. They're all going forward for adoption. In green, you have uh, the provisionally adopted chapters that the assembly has seen. Uh, these uh, include, uh, this is kind of like a sandwich, the rewrites like a sandwich. You have your introductory procedures uh, to help you use and interpret the code. Um, 
those are the outside, and then you have more of the content in the middle. Um, aside from the green chapters, you have the already adopted and in effect chapters. There are two of them, that's Signs and Kirkwood. And then two additional chapters coming forward to adoption with the rest uh, in, in red include the Chugach Eagle River chapter and then the glossary. Uh, the Chugach Eagle River chapter has been through the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, review process. It's currently at the uh, doorstep of the Assembly Committee and uh, will be coming forward with the rest of the chapters for adoption. Usually when we adopt uh, a major change to code, uh, the effective date is the date of adoption or the day after. With the Title 21 rewrite, uh, it'll come forward with a recommendation that there be uh, a, a grace period uh, of a year, two years. Uh, and during that period, um, Jerry, Jerry had me take out the bullet about the sabbatical we're actually going to go straight into some things <laughs> uh, uh, for that, uh, that uh, effective date. I put the sabbatical back in. <laughs> <laughs> we have, uh, we've already begun staff training of those who will be at the camera reviewing and have um, uh, begun work on a, a user's guide. The user's guide is informational. It's there to assist the applicant. Uh, there's also a uh, talk of uh, arranging community training opportunities for those who are using the code in the community. And then uh, there have been recent amendments to Title 21 in the last couple of years uh, that uh, simply need to be rolled into the new life. Related planning efforts include uh, uh, independent projects that, um, that are um, either underway or getting started. Uh, these can be completed later as uh, after implementation of the rewrite. Some of them are modules of the rewrite that have been uh, reserved uh, and that can be plugged in to the rewrite uh, once they are individually completed. Others are just our ongoing city planning efforts, uh, including uh, some important things happening, including an update to Anchorage's land use plan map, which is itself about 30 years old, and uh, ongoing work in our neighborhood and district plans that are also elements of the city's comprehensive plan. We believe that we've threaded the eye of the needle, that as Anchorage enters its second century, that we have a code that will uh, well equip us for uh, uh, development moving forward. Uh, it's been a, a, a very extensive process. Uh, we believe we're ready uh, to move forward on the schedule that's, uh, uh, that's been called for, and that includes uh, a hearing in, in, in mid-January. Uh, this is uh, obviously a, uh, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, I appreciate the time listing. Uh, but there is uh, a web page, one web page, it's the main web page, and it contains uh, uh, about all the information you could ever want. And, uh, I'll turn it over to our uh, Assembly Title 21 Committee Chair. Um, I got involved in this actually before I was elected to this body back when the assembly decided to hire Clarion Associates to come up with a draft uh, of Title 21. And when that, that draft first appeared, that very first draft, version one, there was a significant amount of community feedback. Um, I decided early on I wanted to focus my assembly time on this and have either been a member of the committee or chaired the committee every year since. The, my first introduction to Title 21 was the Clarion draft, but since then I've spent a fair amount of time with this. This is our current Title 21, and I discovered not only you know, Tom talked about why it needs to be changed, but it also needs to be changed because in our wisdom we'd amend part of it, but not the subsequent part on the back. So there are internal contradictions. There's places where you can't figure out where to go next to put it together. Basically, um, when what we did was we cobbled it together. There's not, there's not even a really adequate um, introduction or table of contents. It is really, really in need of a fix-up. And I think some other titles are too, but this one was egregious. Um, the, the first few versions we got literally hundreds and hundreds of community comments 
Um, Erica did a really good job. She was the main person at that point of trying to put those in order. We got community councils, we got um, a lot of groups individually sprung up all over town to give us feedback. And the first couple of drafts, I think we really tried to be responsive and listen and address those concerns. Every single concern, there was an analysis done and a response given. Some of the concerns were deemed we hear you, but we don't think it's a big issue, but, and others were significant enough that they actually caused us to change. In my view, every single version has improved. But I'll tell you, this is really difficult because there is so much there. I, I think I've read it now multiple, multiple times, and every time I find something new, I have had a real education, and I still feel like I'm touching the end of the iceberg. So. In my view, that time delay on implementation once we pass it is really critical. Certainly, Tom talked about the staff end, but I think it's going to be critical for us. We will make mistakes. We absolutely will. We will goof up, and we will find a ton of places that we're going to need to make changes to. So not only are we talking about delay in the implementation, we're talking about a window of time after we pass it where we can kind of do an oops thing, where technically the staff will have some ability to do rewrites, and also we'll do an expedited uh, change process in that, that interval of time to fix it. Um, we have also, besides dealing with all of the <coughs> hundreds and hundreds of community and group inputs, we have taken very seriously the Planning and Zoning Commission um, review every single time. Now, as you know, planning and zoning changes and the philosophy of planning and zoning changes, but I really want to assure you that no matter who is on planning and zoning, we have looked at every single thing that they have recommended, debated it, and at some times chosen to implement it, and other times not. There was a delay that I, I know frustrated me, and I think frustrated a lot of people, where it went from uh, the revised document, we had to deal with the transition, we had to deal with a new commission and a new mayor. So we got hung up for a while, but we think we, we got back on track. And we took this planning and this commission's uh, advice and recommendations very seriously, too. I want to applaud them. I see Mr. Ferguson here is here. He's the only <coughs> member of the current commission that I see in the room. But um, they, they put in hours and hours and hours. They created subcommittees and looked at specific sections and recommended a lot. So what we did when we started meeting again was every committee member had before them the chapters that as we provisionally approved them. I, I just pulled out chapter three. This is my, my file here. This is the provisionally adopted. We also had the chapter three as adopted by planning and zoning commission and in the front of it is a general <coughs> overview of what's in the chapter and then we have listed out the planning and zoning commission amendments that they presented and then we had included the amendments proposed by the staff which included amendments from the mayor by the way planning and zoning did not accept all of the mayor's post amendments you may be interested in that or you may not. So then we got a document that we went through in committee that had the same color coding, the red, the blue, and the yellow. And what, what I basically did was, at times not as well as I should, is to let every assembly member have enough time to look at chapter three and come up with problems they might have or amendments they might like to have and then we spent most of our time, though, in committee, some with individual assembly members' amendments, but most of the time dealing with a document like this. Staff gave us for each chapter a document that included their issues, particularly with things that planning and zoning had passed, but also with things that had come to them in the interim and issues that they thought needed to be addressed beyond what we had. So then we took each, every single one of these, 
and we talked about it. And the way we, t we tried to talk about it is we tried to present to the committee a, here's why this was done, here's what the problem is, pro and con um, discussion. Sometimes the situation was complicated enough that it was difficult to reach a simple, <laughs> a simple resolution of those conflicting views. You, you all, we all know how hard that is. So there were some search situations where I specifically tasked members of the community who had come to our meeting to come up with a <coughs> compromise or a workable solution to the problems that had been discussed. And I really want to thank Mr. Potter's here. And I tasked him, I gave him assignments and homework. And what I he did yellow stickies on a regular basis. <laughs> I tried to create um, opportunities for folks. Uh, I particularly want to recognize, he's not here, but Terry Schoenthal of Land Design North had some real specific comments on the landscaping section. As many of you know, he does a lot of work with the city. And he and uh, Tomas, what's Tomas's last name? Dick. Dick. Met with us, and they met even more with us, with staff, Dave Tremont back there, sat down with them hours and hours, and came up when there were sticky problems with an alternative solution that at least seemed to us to address the comments and concerns that we had. So once we got that alternative solution back in committee, we'd look at that and see if there were any main concerns or not. Now, the reason there's a delay right now that I know is frustrating some people is that in committee this last time, because we were under a time crunch, we did not wordsmith. We said, here's the general concept of what we want you to do. And right now, and for the last month, staff has been trying to give back words that implement the concept agreement that we gave them. And I know there's frustration too because the community wants to see what those, what what document the committee is going to recommend. We're getting there, but we're not quite there yet. What, what we are, the step we're at now is they have come up with, now I don't know because I haven't seen everything. I've been tied up at AML for three days, but they have sent me what they think incorporates all of the changes that the committee recommends for chapter two, say. And then I've read up to see if my brain agrees that that's generally um, what's, what the committee agreed. And then as soon as we've got that process, we're gonna post it on the web so that the community and everybody can see what wording we're going to, to recommend to the committee. Our goal is to have that document available on the web certainly prior to December 18th and we will have basically an alternative Title 21 that encapsulates most of all of the provisionally adopted but incorporates also the changes and amendments that were discussed um, in committee. Some of the recommendations changed from Planning and Zoning Commission and from the Mayor and certainly from staff. In addition to that, my understanding, until I just saw that slide, is that we were also going to be incorporating some of the specific amendments that the Assembly has already dealt with and passed in the past few years to Title 21 to incorporate them too. It is extremely difficult to summarize our work. I know Rosemary and I have had multiple conversations about that because the concepts and the far-reaching picture that Tom gave is all good and true, but I know my brain is really concrete to the exasperation I know of many of you. And for me, I need to read the language and deal with each of the specific decisions. There are literally thousands of decisions in here, folks. What we are really trying to do, though, is to highlight those decisions for you in color coding so that there would be no surprises. Um, some of the things will continue to be controversial as we go through it, but 
folks, I, we really did try to find a middle ground when there were discussions and, um, and when there were problems. So if there's any specific questions on process, I'd be glad to go ahead, Elvie. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Uh -huh. Not on the process, but you mentioned that, you know, there are going to be some groups, okay, also known in my mind as housekeeping changes. Yes. So will there be some kind of provision so that the housekeeping changes will all have to come before the assembly? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, unfortunately, the oops, I think, will be bigger than just housekeeping. Ah, I've in my mind because it's really this is huge. Oh, okay. Um, there is a provision that's in there that the planning director um, and correct me if my wording is wrong here. You will have the ability to do technical changes. There's a section in there on that. You won't have the wording corrections. What is that, Erica? Help me. All changes go to the assembly, okay. but we you can bring we can bring technical changes to the assembly. That's right, okay. And there's also, one of the things that staff tried to do, as, because they were requested, I think, by so many folks in the development community, is try to put some limits on the time that title, the number of times Title 21 has changed. Because it's hard for folks to keep track. Um, I frankly fought that like crazy, because I have seen so many changes <coughs> needed during my nine years. But we did put in a provision here for a certain period. Now, my memory is three, but it might be five years. <coughs> there is an ability to do those changes a little more. Um, there's more frequently, and then later there's a calculation on time. Anything else on that topic, <coughs> Jerry Tomerica? OK. Go ahead. Um, and, and I really appreciate it. I, I, I've got to say something probably out of monument or something to you because in the end of the day hopefully your brain will stay solid for a while years to come even when you leave the body because you're, you're going to be our subject matter expert from the assembly body in perpetuity. Maybe that's a good thing, maybe it was a bad thing, but thank you for taking that. Oh, well, huge deal. The, the concern that I have heard from members of the community, and of course I be the first to tell you that as I go through the chapter I start doing one of two things, getting a brain cramp or I start to nod off a little because it's just some of it is just, it, it does kind of vapor lock my mind on, on building plus. But the, the changes that have been made, the proposals and all the things you've explained, will members of the community be able to access the same look like that one slide that was color coded that said planning and zoning change, yes. staff change. They'll be able to see that online. Yes. That it's very clear that they can see from the very first implementation of, <coughs> of a, of a uh, proposal and then it's in its heads. You know, who did it? what what we've actually done is we've been so thorough in posting things. I think it's intimidating to people using the web page, frankly. Right now you can get this one that I showed you that has all the planning and zoning. That is currently on the web. Right. The last the one that's not on the web is the one that incorporates the assembly work. And the reason it's not on the web is because we gave them concepts instead of words. And frankly, I just want to read what the words are before we post it, because I'm worried there might be some miscommunication. So yes, there should be plenty of time. And I, and I think that's what I've been hearing from the community. I, I can't answer, as you say, you know, the one that comes to my mind recently and it's starting to come back to us again is the backyard chickens. I mean, you know, somebody comes to you and says, you know, I, I want to know about, and, and I say, well, I can tell you what, I last read, but then, as you say, there have been changes that have been added tonight. All right. Well, we did talk about chickens. I know Dick has a strong opinion. And guess what? Dick and I don't quite agree on this. But we did talk They're about... They're baked and fried. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we did talk about chickens in committee, and we are recommending a slight change in two places on the small, on the chicken ordinance. And if you want, I can tell you about them now, or you can wait and enjoy the thrill. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy no, no, no. Yeah, you're you're keep me in suspense. Keep me in suspense. We're getting calls now. Wait until she allows chickens in Trader Park. Okay, now. That's <laughs> not too thick. That was not fair. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Very briefly. You run it for me. I do. All right. There are two changes that we made. One was we are not going to allow free-range chickens. You've got to keep them in a pen. 
that we talked to I talked to Jack Frost about the code complaints, and as you know, the code complaints are bears and neighbors. No, oh, my neighbors are letting the cheese. So we could have, and we talked about, you know, it requiring electrified fence. And frankly, I didn't want to go there, but if you guys want to go there and add that in, we can do it. The other change that's proposed, the one Dick mentioned, is I have got a trailer park in my in my district that is on a huge tract of land that there's trailers that are 20, 40, 50 feet apart from each other and there's a lady getting sighted in there for chickens. So what I, I put in with the committee's blessing is, okay, right now it says you can't have any chickens on a trailer park, period. And I said, okay, you can if you keep in a pen and you're at least 20 feet away from any other residence. So, um, if you don't like that, then amend it out. But that's all the changes we did on chickens. So if you want more changes, be thinking about it. Patrick. Um, I just want to make sure I'm clear on process here, Madam Chair. <clears throat> the default will be that each of the changes made by each of the entities that have reviewed this that are still in the document that we get will be accepted unless a member seeks to amend that change. The document you get, the committee recommends you adopt wholeheartedly. If you want to change something, you can take something out, but, amend. But it'll, yeah. but it'll be color coded based on who made it. The PMC would be here for the administration would be there. That color now, would be. Now, Patrick, that I wish I could assure you 100% that was true. It is very, very difficult to agree sometimes on color coding because <laughs> something came from PNZ and then staff wanted to tweak it a little bit and then the assembly wanted to tweak it a little bit. So, so we've had some discussions already back and forth where I've said, Erica, this should not be blue, it should be green, or vice versa. So we're trying our best. But you might have the wrong color yeah, yeah, but, the, but the default is that everything that's in there is accepted almost. Yes, changes. yes, sir. Well, actually, actually, I, Jennifer, I thought what we had discussed is that we will present an S version. Yes. But for background, because we don't have everything that is in that color code. Or, so you're saying the color code one that we have now that we're is working not, on. not the one. Okay, okay, never You mind. haven't seen the one. Right, okay, we're now We're creating so, the so, one. So the one is, 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 okay, where all amendments come from. Okay, yeah. I'm fine. Where all amendments Go ahead, Chris. Uh, you know, we had uh, we had a fair amount of public testimony earlier on, and you know, and I, I guess the, the largest concern I have is just do no harm. You know, and uh, I we had people who who had their livelihood invested in, in, in property. I remember a particular gentleman there in Spinard area that was very concerned about how that how you know rezoning was going to impact him or re, you know repositioning our, our Title 21 classifications on some of the property. But um, one area of interest I have, obviously, Girdwood is one uh, one of our communities that. Uh, actually has experienced uh, uh, the implementation of this Title 21 revision as, as we have experienced in signed ordinance. Um, I guess one question I would be kind of curious about is, is, and we've had lots of feedback and lots of discussion about the impact of, of some of the zoning changes on Girdwood, but just to kind of get a, uh, maybe some sort of insight as to, you know, since that's actually been in, in, implemented, you know, what, you know, what sort of, uh, what, what are the lessons learned there that we might be able to anticipate uh, before we you know, step into this? Well, I have certainly discovered during my last 15 years of public life that Girdwood has got many, many diverse opinions. <coughs> we are bringing forth a Chapter 9 Girdwood with some amendments. And those amendments came from the Board of Supervisors. And what, what I did with that one is I particularly asked Jennifer, Jennifer, is this reflecting what you're hearing? And then the committee basically, and with still, Jennifer blessed it, the committee and staff said, okay, it's in there. So there are some changes. And, and we're still we're still a little bit in that process, but I think. Yeah, we, we didn't heard, deal with yeah. everything they wanted because some of what they wanted was significant and big. Jerry? Well, that's true. They, they do have some issues out there, sort of people have issues out there with the current code. We're going to be down there next week talking to GBOS and the Land Use Committee uh, about you know some of their different concerns. So I think we're going to continue to collect those issues and we'll probably come back um, with you know future amendments from that discussion. Yeah. But we're hoping to make all the amendments when this 
Title 21 goes to you, so it will all be part of the package. Okay. Tom? Just a, an additional response to the, the question. Uh, the Kirkwood Code is just very different from the rewrite. It's not only because the community is different, because it just had a, a very different process, and uh, it and, and the code is just in Kirkwood is just so different. We took an we took an R11 district and we created about 30 very tailored districts to Kirkwood. It it certainly didn't go through the amount of uh, of testing and, and, and the type of the, the many iterations that the rewrite went through. So the rewrite in fall adds very little in terms of new zoning districts. It, it's just a totally different code experience there. Yeah, I've, I've heard from some frustrated Gerdley people. Okay, and I, I did have a, one question on the presentation that you provided, which was very good. On slide 11, it, is that is that supposed to be a good thing or a bad thing? No more. Uh, Just oh, all of it. Existing condition. Do you see that as a positive sign or a negative sign? What, what I'm looking at, which is basically a fence across the road, and uh, you know, so you, you have to basically drive yeah. around to get the. Well, I, I have professional side of me give you an answer. The okay. personal side of me, I lived at the house to the next next to that house for three years. Uh, the personal and professional are basically in line here. As I experienced it, um, when you have a, a street system that doesn't quite connect, but it's, this is just a, a great That's shot. right away that got great blocked. Photography, uh, you have issues, and you know there's, you know there's a car. Tom, you have a biased interest here. I have a. Let's just say that there are cars that are. Well, let's stay with the professional. Uh, we think that when you have more ways to get in and out of a neighborhood, uh, you could have a couple things happen. Uh, one potential is that you get uh, through traffic impacts on a neighborhood, and so you have to uh, be aware of that. But in general, the overall effect of a, of a more complete street grid is that you can uh, get the, uh, the traffic board dispersed, uh, you have more ways to get around, and also you can avoid situations where really the collector through traffic isn't going uh, through the neighborhood. And, and so we think that in general, you, you can get a more efficient city out of a, 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 a more connected street. Chris, this slide can incorporate easily three weeks of meetings right there because there is so much in those three little blurbs that's controversial that people want to argue at length about that took that's not simple <laughs> well that road should go straight that's, 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 that's otherwise you drive around 15 houses to the right come back around and get right on the other side okay I think Nick was actually yeah. okay. Okay. All right. Maybe with this process now, it's going to come to the assembly, and then we can make amendments on the floor of the assembly. Take six votes to amend something, then it goes on the mayor, and it may take eight votes to. You can't lie down the back All right. What one thing though on the amendments that I want. Wanna, Ernie Ernie Watch has it. suggested to me, and I think it's a good one, folks is that we have a process where amendments are handed in in advance and they are discussed in committee. And the reason I think that's good is there's some, no statement up there is simple. <laughs> and they're all interconnected. So if what I'd like is for the committee to be able to give a review and a recommendation of discussion on the proposed amendments. And I know that makes it harder on everybody and we love frustrating. But I think it will give a better product at the end, I really do. All right. Dick, anything else? Ernie? Okay. I, I, I want to start this by prefacing that I am making this, these statements as chair of the assembly this year. And uh, a lot of compliment and a lot of thank yous, particularly to you, Debbie. Uh, I, I talked to Debbie a number of times when uh, she's been on the edge of the cliff ready to absolutely go over, feeling that uh, she wasn't doing an adequate job. But I'm going to tell you, I don't know how anybody could ever have done any better job with this than what you've done, Debbie. You have been absolutely remarkable. Uh, the way that you've run the meetings, the way you control the meetings, 
and I always, I always delighted in the days when we were sit there where you did have conflict and I could always tell when you're getting there, you get this expression on your face where you would basically say, okay, Tim, Jim, you guys have got one week. Find something that'll work. If you don't get it, I'll make the decision for you. I always loved those. But this, there was true compromise all the way through in this. Uh, and staff, Jerry, Erica, Tom, all of you, you people have been phenomenal. I couldn't have asked more of anyone than what you provided. I know we all tend to get frustrated. We're not getting it fast enough, but it's complicated and it's complex. And part of the reason that I extended the date and extended the date and extended the date is because we needed to do it just because of the sheer volume of work that we are handling and that they are handling. And the one thing that I wanted to make absolutely sure of is when this comes to the body, it's a complete document. I didn't want to bring it before us when we were still had a few corrections to make or we still had one chapter to get done. And we are, Jerry is very comfortable as we are that by the 18th of December, this will be a complete document. And actually it's working out really well, I think, because as these chapters are finished, prior to the 18th, they will be put up so people can start reading chapters. It's not like you'll have to all of a sudden read entire Title 21. But it also gives the community that 30 days between us introducing it on the 18th and when we take it up for public testimony on the 15th of January. Do I think we'll cover testimony on this in one meeting? No, not gonna happen. Is it possible that I will actually maybe schedule some special meetings just to deal with Title 21? If that's necessary, I have no problem with doing it because I promised Miss Osiander one way or the other by the time uh, April comes and her term is up on this assembly, we're going to have a Title 21. Will it be perfect? Absolutely not. But the thing that we're going to accomplish by this is we're going to finally have a document that when we find problems in, we've got a document we can work on and correct. And we can really move ahead. What I ask of everyone is don't make judgments on what this is until you read it. I was at a community council meeting where I had to correct uh, an individual doing a presenter that made it very clear the document that we were going to be reviewing was the document that PNC had written. As you can see from the way the colors are in here, this is provisionally adopted with changes that have been made by different entities and you're going to be able to look at that and tell, as Ms. Osiander said, some of these become blurred because they are things that have been mutually agreed to and changed. So you're going to see some of that in there. But you're going to be able to go through this document and look at exactly what has been changed and, and in most cases be able to tell who did the change. So hold off judgment about what you've heard about this document. I, I really think at the end of the day uh, we're going to be pretty pleased with what you're going to be working with here. A lot of time and effort went into it and we will take the time that we need in order to be able to put this together where we've all got, uh, got ownership in it. But no doubt at the end of the day we will find a really nice rock, paint it gold, put Miss Osiander's name on it and Thank you. memory That's of this accomplishment. Thank you. Well, I think we do a setback, a landscape setback, a buffer, and, and, and name it here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, I, 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 I have noted and have been, to, you know, the earful that I've been getting from people since since being in, involved, I guess, in the, this part of the process, to be blunt, you know, I've lived here 40 years and I've not given this particular chapter its due. I really haven't given it a lot of thought. Uh, you know, I've, I've bought some pre-existing homes. I didn't have to have one built or developed or designed, and so 
I have had to go through that that process, and I know that others do that, and I know there are businesses that do this for a living. My question, I guess, is uh, to simplify: is we're not going to have to go through from 1969 to uh, present or to, to some future date before any future changes to, to I guess, total rewrites again. I mean, we're, we're, do we have a process in the new rewrite that will allow us to change enough to keep modern and up with technology and changes in industry? And well, actually, you're, you're kind of hitting a, an area that caused some real concern for us, and that is because there's been such a, a time lag between some of our plans and some of our code, there's been some concern about what ruled and what how we interpreted. So we spent a whole lot of time in committee. We called Dennis to come to our committee twice, three times, to help us come up with language that helped clearly differentiate that. We are obviously behind the curve in doing what we should do in bringing up our plans. But one thing we, I think, are, have done better is to put in language to, be in, to ensure that there are amendments and, la and language that accurately incorporates the intent of this body when there's plans adopted or when there's new code changes. I know that staff is very aware of that and has spent a significant amount of time trying to get processes in place so that doesn't happen. Um, well, I won't give you an example, though I hate to get into specifics, but I'm going to because this is one that's going to be hotly debated, the, the setback from streams, all right? <coughs> We started on that with a big wide setback. We got feedback back, and the committee is recommending that we actually stick with 25 foot setbacks. And there's a whole variety of reasons for that. I can talk to you about it. But we adopted the Hillside District Plan with 50 foot setbacks. Conflict, right? Yeah. So we put specific language in there saying, no, the Hillside District Plan is going to stay the 50 foot, because we adopted that, and that's what it is it will stay even though the rest is 25. So we've got to we've got to be on top of those better. It's a problem. It is. Thank you. Yeah. Tim. Uh, I just wanted to take the time to address the assembly and, and especially about Paul's comment about how do you keep this updated. If you look at the comp plan right now, Anchor 2020, there was a requirement for a mandatory 10-year review at the midpoint of the life of it. We're well past that already, and we're still playing around with the implementation part. Of it. That's not unlike what happened before when the 82 plan took till 2001 to get done. Uh, there was no intermediate plan review. So go into this with a clear mind. You can't commit future assemblies or future administrations, but please establish some statement that it will be the um, the goal of the city to actually do those interim reviews, as they're said, so that we don't get caught in this position again where we're 20, 30 years, 40 years into a deal, and then we're talking about doing a whole rewrite. Let's keep this contemporary, and that means there has to be adequate funding budgeted so that the staff has the ability to get the work done. Well, you know, and if I might. Go ahead. And, and my only response to that, Ms. Potter, and I want to thank you again. I know that's been acknowledged by the chair, but I would actually, actually ask and challenge those that have been involved and have a vested interest, please continue to remind us on an ongoing basis. That it's <laughs> yes, no, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Mr. Ferguson regularly sings that song. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, this, is, this is just like done? maintaining your property or maintaining your house. If you spend a little bit on a regular basis, the heating system doesn't fail, everything else doesn't fail. So I would just ask you to make sure that as this is going forward, and there is an overlap of assembly people, and there, that was on purpose, that keep telling the next ones that come online that we need to spend money at about this time and plan for it, put the money aside so that the staff and the administration can actually get the work done. Okay. okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we, the public, everybody knows how the public felt about this whole process. And we have somebody here from the public who's been involved from the beginning. And I really want to, since she's here, I want to hear what she has to say, um, Ms. Richardson, about everything that happened today. Did you hear what I just said? Well, I did. <clears throat> Thanks for your, your comments. Um, if you don't mind. Yeah. Well, we have been pleased with the, the efforts that staff has made to reach out to the public over the years. I think we had a very involved 
gosh, it went over longer than a year, blow by blow review of that first draft uh, set code. And um, it has been disheartening to see it go behind closed doors in 2010. A huge problem. And uh, we're just now recovering from that. Um, it, I'm still not quite clear what will be coming forward out of the color-coded version. And we're very anxious to see it all. And um, thanks for, for acknowledging your citizens out there who have been trying to pay attention and be helpful to this process. There, there are groups all over town that have, have continued to watch this and, and try to weigh in on it. Unfortunately, it's really hard to do it consistently for a long period of time for anybody. All right, now I'm sorry, there were multiple people. Um, wait, Jim, you want to say I something? I just want to make one comment about going forward. I highly encourage it. When this gets looked at again 10 years down the road, do it in pieces. We, we did not want to do it that way, and I was, you know, I heard that discussion. But what the process was taking too much resources too long, and I really think, and it won't be any of us in the room, I don't think. <laughs> but uh, leave a message for the next group to do it in pieces. Okay. And I, I would like to real quickly, I've been talking to Adam about the work not being done even when this is done because that land use map that was flashed on the board during my first term we held a public hearing on this and what happens is you'll get a guy who lives in one corner on one lot that's one color that comes unglued this is going to be a big challenge for you guys because that desperately needs to be adopted we're going to have new designations and descriptions of zoning districts and particularly some of them have some significant changes and the land use map will rule where people are supposed to be when they change zones and I think it's going to be very very difficult and controversial for you and it's not going to be for me it's going to be for you guys but that was just sort of an alert well, there's still a lot of work to be done Ernie, did you have other I, comments? I do. I, I've got a couple of things really quick. One, number one, the plan is when we do get into that, is bringing you back as a consultant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't think you will get away. Uh, a, a sincere thank you to Harriet, LB, and Paul. Uh, you two brought the provisionally adopted, laid on the table for action a, a good while back. And you've been most gracious to allow us to continue to move that back so that we can put both of these together when we uh, when we start the public process on this. So I can't tell you how much I appreciate the understanding and the patience in regards to that. And uh, then one thing, one, one of the uh, highlights of this entire process was all during it, Debbie and I talk, and I even made the effort on a regular occasion to call and tell her what a great do job she was doing in this process. But then I called her one day and I told her, I said, Debbie, you know, I've been telling you, you've been doing exceptionally well on this. Today I'm calling to tell you that you've gone above and beyond that because now you've got both sides upset with you, <laughs> which means you're doing a really good job. <laughs> I do want to thank the people who've gone to this committee over the years. Harry has put in a whole lot of time on this. Jennifer has too, and now we've dragged Dick into the process. Thank you for, for doing that. Thanks for taking the job, Debbie. And Ernie's been coming too, so thank you. There's been a fair. I've actually had also several conversations with Sheila Selkrig oh. because that's a her big deal. And there's a couple things that she's nudged me on. She's like, Is that still there, Debbie? And Debbie, I've never been asked to um, come to the committee. Oh, hey, come quick, on, let me finish. Debbie. Let me finish. Okay. okay. I've never been asked to. Um, well, I mean, you might have mentioned come to but I don't have to be a committee member. Oh, and I'm thankful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was just, I was wondering if you, I was wondering where this is going, because I, you know, if you want. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Every great. Thursday, there'll be a meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as, as, as many of these as I've been involved in, uh, Debbie has, of course, been involved in all of them. Uh, but the ones that I've been involved in, keep in mind that the decisions have not always been unanimous. I mean, quite a few unanimous decisions. Um, 
there are quite a few that one side won and the other side won. But what I suggest uh, to this body, since I won't be around, to um, be the conscience of the Title 21 committee for some uh, segments of the community is that you listen to the public that comes to talk to you about this and communicates with you, especially those who have spent time with us in that conference room at uh, the Permit Center all these years and that have paid attention to every step of this process. So um, when it does come before you, um, I am sorry that I won't be here. I'll be with you in spirit and I might be with you on the web if, it's, uh, if it works out for me. And you might, some of you might get text messages from me, so keep your phones active. Good. I was actually talking to Stacy Schubert at AML. A lot of you remember her from the Anchorage Chamber, and then she worked for the mayor for a while. But I mentioned to her that I actually met Jim Ferguson the week that I got elected to the assembly, because the Anchorage Chamber of Commerce had a Title 21 committee meeting, and I went to it. And there he was. This thing, I we got it. So yeah, and then people have been there at the very end. All right, there, there. I think there may be actually need for another work session when you start hearing from the community about specific issues, because there is a, a fair amount that's controversial, and that I'd like to have the opportunity to give you background on on the pro and con and why we made this. Can the Boma friendly come around on this, or they still want us to wipe it out completely, start over again? Which we're not going to do. There are some people, yes, who are still, don't do it completely. There are people mad at both ends, I guarantee you. So anybody that doesn't want to do it again, get ready for the 13-year wait. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if, okay. I, if I could make a suggestion, you said something about bringing the committee together to review the final. I would strongly suggest that you make that a committee of the whole assembly so that the, those who have not been on the committee and in on those multiple two and three hour sessions at least get to get an idea of how complex and difficult all those decisions were. Okay. Uh, and I, 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 would strongly, I would strongly suggest it. I believe it would be a good investment of the time of those of you who have not served on this committee. Um, it, it'll give you a leg up in when, it, when it actually comes before you and you will understand the changes that you might be asked to make by members of the public a whole lot better than if you allowed the, the Title 21 committee to, to, uh, to deal with them by itself. Okay. All right. Is there anything else we need to discuss at this point? Yeah, I just want to know why you haven't finished Anchorage 2020, Debbie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you should dismiss this meeting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're adjourned. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I'm sorry. <laughs>
charge with it. But, but I think we need to talk about the process, right? If you can tell my story, there's some other questions. I wanted to talk to you about that. I wanted to talk to you about that. I wanted to talk to you about that. That's why you can talk an hour. There was an
I couldn't get an answer. So I didn't say it. What is that? Uh, so, manic? Okay, wait a second. Uh, long time after we were going to sleep. And they didn't go back to work, but the management said they wanted to work. Today was the day So, it's. My children, when I worked in Juneau, had never seen a Twinkie. They were eight years old. And one of my son's friends in school, you know, kids trading, he got to taste the Twinkie. And they teased me about it today. We were in the grocery store, and he saw that we could buy Twinkies. He wanted to buy a Twinkie, and I announced in my wild voice, no, Twinkies will never enter our house. It was just ain't going to happen. Those same yes. Twinkies could have entered your house 30 years ago. Yes, and Twinkies still be and perfect. cockroaches will last forever. Bad psychological parenting, because what you did is you made them more alluring. That's what I did with Barbie dolls. No Barbie dolls. No Barbie dolls, no guns, no knives in my yard. If you're a neighbor, I will take them. When you leave, they you get them back. Did you really do that? Yes. All they did was they got Barbie dolls in paper. I gave them back. No. You are hard to work. I always have been. Bye. Anyway, it's going to be interesting. I don't know what's going to happen in January. But I will. I appreciate that. I know you're going to make it. But you're going to feel like you're going to voice. Well, I don't know. But I don't know. I truly have invited people to come. Last instance, last possible time to learn more about the process. 